As long as you feel you're the most important thing in the world, you cannot really appreciate the world around you. You're like a horse with blinders. All you see is yourself apart from everything else. I am going to talk to my little friend here, he said, pointing to a small plant. He kneeled in front of it and began to caress it and talk to it. I did not understand what he was saying at first, but then he switched languages and talked to the plant in Spanish. He babbled inanities for a while, then he stood up. It doesn't matter what you say to a plant. You can just as well make up the words. What's important is the feeling of liking it and treating it as an equal. He explained that a man who gathers plants must apologize every time for taking them and must assure them that someday his own body will serve as food for them. So all in all, the plants and ourselves are even. Neither we nor they are more or less important. Come on, talk to the plant. Tell it that you don't feel important anymore. I went as far as kneeling in front of the plant, but I could not bring myself to speak to it. I felt ridiculous and laughed. I was not angry, however. Don Juan patted me on the back and said it was all right, that at least I had contained my temper. From now on, talk to the plants. Talk until you lose all sense of importance. Talk to them until you can do it in front of others. Go to those hills over there and practice by yourself. I asked if it was all right to talk to the plants silently, in my mind. He laughed and tapped my head. No, he said. You must talk to them in a loud and clear voice if you want them to answer you. I walked to the area in question, laughing to myself about his eccentricities. I even tried to talk to the plants, but my feeling of being ludicrous was overpowering. After what I thought was an appropriate wait, I went back to where Don Juan was. I had the certainty he knew I had not talked to the plants. He did not look at me. He signaled for me to sit down. Watch me carefully. I'm going to have a talk with my little friend. He kneeled down in front of a plant, and for a few minutes he moved and contorted his body, talking and laughing. I thought he was out of his mind. This little plant told me to tell you that she is good to eat. She said that a handful of them would keep a man healthy. She also said there's a batch of them growing over there. Don't mind pointing to an area perhaps 200 yards away. Let's go find out. I laughed. I was sure we would find the plants because he was an expert in the terrain and knew where all the edible and medicinal plants were. Upon arriving at the hillside, I found a whole cluster of the same plants. I wanted to laugh, but he did not give me the time. He wanted me to thank the batch of plants. I felt excruciatingly self-conscious and could not bring myself to do it. The world around us is a mystery, and men are no better than anything else. If a little plant is generous with us, we must thank her. We walked for another hour and then started on our way back to his house. At a certain time, I dropped behind and he had to wait for me. He checked my fingers to see if I had curled them. I had not. He told me imperatively that whenever I walk with him, I had to observe and copy his mannerisms or not come along at all. I can't be waiting for you as though you're a child, he said in a scolding tone. That statement sunk me into depths of embarrassment and bewilderment. How could it be possible that such an old man could walk so much better than I? I thought I was athletic and strong, and yet he had to actually wait for me to catch up with him.